Hey, this is John. Thanks for joining me for this video today. Every now and again, I'll get questions about adding chipping on decals. Uh, you know, somebody will see a model I've done and they'll see the chipping on it and they'll say, how did you do that? And there are several techniques to do it. Um, one that's fairly simple and, uh, you know, a lot of folks probably already use it, but some of you may not know about it. Um, one that's that's fairly simple. Uh, there's a couple of others that are very high risk, but they have great payoff. So I'll talk about those a little bit. But before I start with demonstrating applying chipping to your decals, I wanted to talk a little bit about, I guess you'd say, the theory of markings on any model. Whether it's, um, this is a shield from a high-grade gunpla kit, uh, it could be an airplane, it could be a tank, it could be machining career, it could be anything, anything that has any markings. I think it's helpful to, to consider how markings would be applied, how they are applied in the real world, or how they would have to be applied in, in, in any kind of sci-fi or fictional environment. Now, for instance, on this shield, let's, let's assume this is a real thing. Um, this, this is, we'll just say this is a real object, that I'm modeling. Of course, there would have been some paint applied to it. Um, we don't care so much about the paint for the sake of example, but this white, whether it's just base material or paint, there is an underlying color. And then on top of that, the markings would have been applied. Now in the real world, there's several ways that it happens. Um, real simple kind of stuff is often just done with a, literally a cardboard cutout of a stencil and some spray paint. I did that many times in the Army. We would put our team numbers on uh, vehicles that we had and so we had a stencil that just said 921 and it was a piece of cardboard about this big and the stencils were cut out and we would hold that up to whatever we were going to um, mark and get a can of just Krylon black spray paint from Walmart and spray it on there and pull the stencil away and there would have 921. We weren't worried about it being super neat or, um, you know, even we didn't even worry about alignment a lot of times. We just simply needed to mark vehicles or crates or other equipment so that we could identify which team it belonged to. And that happens in every military uh, branch. Civilians do it, you know, so it's, it's very, very uh, common. Another common method is just hand painting markings. You've probably seen many tanks. I see it especially modeled on Russian tanks where the markings will be applied by hand and the modeler might even simulate where the paint runs a little bit. I've even seen that on aircraft. Uh, so sometimes markings are applied by hand. Other times there are more elaborate paint templates that are used and they may use a spray gun. I've seen that done sometimes with national markings uh, on aircraft. They'll, they'll have a template and they'll spray on the color and then maybe mask that and put another template down and spray on another color, whatever. Um, they may be sprayed on. Other times, the markings on any aircraft, tank, object, whatever, they're actually stickers, not necessarily water slide, but quite often vinyl or some other material that you literally just lay on um, and then work the air out from under it and and uh, stick it uh, stick it on there and now more and more you're even seeing these vinyl wraps that are quite often used um, for 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 certain markings and things the point of all of that is to say that when you're doing chipping you have to include the markings because most of those markings come out of uh, the factory or they're put on at the unit level. Um, they tend to be something that's put on early in the models or, or the, the object's life. So you're going to want to do weathering and chipping over your decals. Now certainly you could have some where you did some weathering and chipping over most of your decals and then added another one and did a lighter amount of chipping over it and weathering to to, to indicate that it may have been added later in the life of the object. But, for the most part, there, 
the same chipping and weathering that can happen to the rest of the object can happen to the markings. So it's, it's important to know when it comes to chipping that that theory applies. The decal, the marking, whatever, is just another layer in the process. So if this had a primer coat, let's say that primer coat was dark gray, there would be a, some material underneath, maybe it's a metallic shiny cover, then there would be the primer over it, then there would be the white paint, then there would be the marking. So when you're chipping your decals, you have to think in order of what's underneath it and how deep you want to model the chip to go. But you never knew there was that much theory behind chipping decals, did you? <laughs> Here's a model that I'm currently working on. It's from Warhammer 40K. It's an, an Adeptus Mechanicus Scorpius Disintegrator. Um, long title, cool model. Anyway, you can see that I've already done quite a bit of chipping on uh, the model. And I've done several colors of chipping. You'll note that the base color is a dark red, and then I've used lighter red for shallower chips. And then in some places I've gone in with a darker color to, to add additional chipping where there's, there's larger areas of chipping, like right there. Now, the theory is this thing is is the underlying material is a darker color that can oxidize or a darker material that can oxidize so i wanted a reddish brown you know as the underlying material then there's this dark red paint painted over it the the light red indicates the, indicates the first level of chips the darker color indicates that it's going all the way through to the base material so when i want to chip any of the markings I have to think in terms of the order. The first chipping that would happen would be the dark red. And I'm using this uh, game color Cory Red, but in this case the color doesn't really matter. Um, the next layer of chipping, if it were on the markings, would be the lighter color, the wild, wider, wild, 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 rider red. I've either had too much or too little coffee this time of morning. <laughs> and then the darker color is this chipping brown. Now the way I can do this, and this is, this is for 95% for of the decals that I put on a model, this is the, the basic method I use to apply chipping. And all I'm going to do is get this very fine tipped brush. Um, this is the Wargamer Insane Detail Brush, but any really fine pointed brush will do. Uh, I like using this one because it doesn't hold a lot of paint, and therefore I tend to not be able to mess it up quite as easy. But all I do is go in here, and if I can get around the camera, I just apply some dots of color. Now. Normally I would have my face about three inches from this. The camera is between me and the subject, so I'll admit this is not going to look as precise as I normally like to do, but I just go in and I add some chipping into the decal. And what pattern you do is up to you. How heavy you do it is completely up to you. You may want an area that looks like it's taken a fairly good gouge like I'll try and do right here like that went silent there for a minute because I was concentrating now one of the drawbacks to using this painting method is sometimes you'll have to go back with a second coat just add in a little color because especially against white like that it can be difficult um, to cover that up on the first coat. But you just keep going at it until you get it the way you want it. And it's completely subjective. If the model you're building is going to be chipped a lot more, then you add a lot more to the decals. If it's less, you may not do very much at all, if any. It's completely, completely subjective. Now, I did do sponge chipping on this model, 
and you can sponge over decals. I find it works better to sponge over larger decals. If I hit this with a sponge, um, even if I tamped off most of the color from the sponge, it might color over a, a lot of that, more than I want. So I tend to go with the brush on smaller decals just because it's easier. But I can go back, once this dries, I can take a look at it, get a little closer to it under my Optivizer, because if you look close, you, you can see that it's going to need a second coat. Um, that, that first one didn't do it. But, which is, which is typical. I mean, I, I, I expected that. But I can color that in a little darker, and then I can later go back with my lighter color to represent something that went only, went, not only went through the marking, but then on through to a deeper cut of the base color. And then I could even put in the darker color, like you see, you see the darker chipping right here. I could do that all the way through so the, the marking looked like it was chipped. And sometimes it can be kind of fun to, uh, let me see if there's another area that I want to do the markings on. This one doesn't have very many decals on it. But sometimes I'll even paint like a slash through it. Um, especially again on larger decals. I'll paint a slash through it and make it look like something, you know, gouge that. So it's really a point of interest. Um, and, uh, and, and it'll just really add to the visual appeal and draw um, the viewer's eye to that. So for basic chipping, paint, I think, is the best way to go. And it can be, like I said, it can be painted on, it can be sponged on. There's several ways of doing it. Uh, so, so whatever method you're using for chipping, just apply that and just think in terms of it's usually easier to do the sponge chipping on larger models and, or on larger markings and the brush painting on the smaller markings. But you will need to experiment a little and I would recommend doing a few test decals on something you don't mind messing up um, if you're not confident of it because if you've only got one marking, make sure the first time you try to do this is not on a single marking that you only have one copy of. Because if you mess it up, you're going to be real mad at me and I'm going to say, well, I told you so. <laughs> okay, now here are a few high risk techniques. And I, I label them as high risk because you stand a pretty good chance of ruining decals. I've done it before. Um, you can push this a little too far and uh, it can create problems. So give this a try, but test it out. See the, see the theory, see how it works on some decals you don't mind messing up before you try it on something for your model. Make sure you're confident doing this. But it does really good shipping. Now, this is from a Machine and Krieger kit. This is a spare from a Machine and Krieger kit. And, and these techniques that I'm showing you right now they work better on larger decals, but I'll actually go in and just using the tip of the blade of my hobby knife, I'll scrape the decal while it's still on the backing paper and create lots of little scratches. Now, the thing to understand about this is when you're doing this, you're damaging the decal. It will potentially come apart where you're putting in these chips. So you have to be you have to be aware of how far you can push it. And different decal manufacturers are easier to work with than others. Some that are fairly thick, um, they're actually good to work with because they hold together well. Decals that are of higher quality and thus thinner, while you can chip them easier, they they very often will come apart because you've messed with the integrity of the, 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 the coating over the top that holds it together. So be very aware of that. Now, you can mitigate that to a certain extent if you put an acrylic clear coat over the decal before applying. You can actually, uh, I've done this before, you can actually brush on a coat of future and that will help somewhat to hold the decal together a little bit. Not a lot, but it'll help somewhat. 
But you can see now, I've been just scraping away while I've been yammering on. I've been scraping away at this decal, and I've got a little bit of chipping on there. Now, where I've scraped all the way through, when I put this on a model, that's going to show the color, the base color, through that. And it will look like real chipping because it is real chipping. And I'm going to put this on this just paint mule that I have that you can see that I use for all sorts of stuff. And I'm just going to apply this like I would any other decal. I'm going to go off camera here and dip it in my water. And we'll see how well it holds up when I come to apply it. Let me see if that got it wet enough. Not quite. There we go, it's starting to move. All right, now I'm going to just pull that off. Now, I'm not doing anything special to align this or anything like that, but when I work out the water, you can see now I've got a chipped decal on there. I could have done more chipping. Uh, you can even cut off sections. You know, you could cut off a section of the letter and and that can look like chipping. Once it's dry, you can even go in and add additional paint chipping over it to extend the technique. So damaging the decal before you put it on can give a really good realistic look, but it does come with uh, a penalty if you do too much. All right, a second very high risk technique involves a sanding stick. Now, this is one you may be saying, are you crazy? Maybe. Um, talk to my wife. She'll give you even odds on it. But you can take a nice clean decal like this and run it against your sanding stick. I have to do part of it at one time and part of it at the other. And scrape it. Now, if you were really doing this, Put on your model you might want to do it in several directions scrape it one way scrape it another you don't necessarily want them all going in the same vector maybe you do um, but what you're doing is even heavier abrasive action than you would do with your uh, exacto knife now i can guarantee you when i try and put this on it's going to shatter so you have to be prepared to essentially put this on in multiple little pieces. This is, this is a high risk technique that can yield a pretty good look, but you may end up ruining the decal or the decal or the decal, whatever you want to call it, and you may not be able to use it. And let me show you what I mean. But this is not something that I'm just demonstrating for the sake of demonstration. I have done this on uh, models, uh, especially on a couple of machining Krieger models. But I'm holding the decal over in my warm water off to the side. And let me test if it's loose. Now see, watch when I move it. You see how it starts coming apart? What you have to be prepared to do is slide that sucker off and then you spend the rest of the time getting off the other pieces. You know, usually when we have a decal shatter, we don't like that. But in this case, we're okay with it. Now you have to keep the surface wet and you're going to lose a few pieces. And then the rest of the process is simply adjusting all of these pieces so that it looks like however you want it to look. Now I could adjust that more obviously uh, to get it lined up, but you, you see the theory. That's a heavily chipped uh, marking. So that's something else to consider. All right, a final variation on what I'm calling the high risk techniques, and I'd, I'd applied these decals earlier. This is one that I applied 
that I scraped with my knife. And this is one that I applied that I scraped with the sanding stick. And I spent a little more time lining that up. And you can see how those two look. Now, you can go in and very lightly scrape the decal after it's on the model. Now, you have to use a super light touch because it's real easy to scrape right through the paint. It's best to do this, in my experience, when the decal has only been on there a few minutes. It's set enough that, that it won't move around as I'm trying to do this, but it's not so set that it's clinging to the paint. Definitely do this before you put on any setting solution. If you've put on setting solution, I wouldn't try this. But on both of these decals, I can go in and add additional scrapes and scratches and dings wherever I want. And if the decal starts coming up, just go with it. That's, that's easier chipping right there. You may have seen how that part started folding up. If that happens, go with it. It's a gift. It's easy chipping. And you just keep playing with it until you get it like you want. If you get it too deep and it starts scraping the paint, you just go back with your base paint and touch in very small dots of color to make sure you correct that and it's not showing through bare plastic or whatever's underneath. Okay, in between filming those high-risk bits, um, I was working on where I could actually see what I was doing. I was working on continuing uh, to weather these decals on the Scorpius disintegrator. And you can see right here, if I can get it in focus there, you can see that I went in and I deepened the red color so that it completely covered the white. And then I added in some of the, the Wild Rider red, still can't say that, um, color so that it it would uh, it would look like chipping going down two layers there. Hopefully that's in better focus. Um, but, you know, up close, when you examine it up close, you may say, yeah, that looks, looks like paint. Um, but few people are, you're, you're really, normal viewing distance is not shoving it straight up in your face. Um, normal viewing distance is going to be about arm's length away, maybe half an arm's length away. So don't, don't be too worried if, you know, under your optivisor or at very close examination, it looks a little rough. It, you can thin the paint a little bit and that'll help it be a little smoother. Um, if you put it on uh, uh, un, unthinned, you may get a little bit of texture. This is still drying out, so it's showing a little bit of texture right now. But once you put additional weathering over this, um, the other things that are going to come later on in the build, they're going to help cover that up and at the end it should look fairly organic. Now over here, you can see that I went in and did a heavier chipping and that involves all three colors. I've got the, I did the base color to do the initial chip through it. Then I did uh, the Wild Rider Red. Hey, there we go, I said it. And then I did the chipping brown through that. And that shows an area that's been chipped even deeper. Um, so when you're painting these on using multiple colors, just like you do with the rest of the chipping, helps suggest uh, depth of the chipping and going down to the base material. And when you put other weathering over it and things like that, it's going to look uh, fairly uh, natural in place. All right, well, I hope you found this helpful um, looking at this. It's a, it's a simple technique, I'll admit. And, and uh, many of you may have watched this and said, well, that's nothing new. And no, it's not really. But keep in mind, um, there's, all of us have been through a point where we didn't know this. And if you don't know this, it may seem like a mystery. So um, what I hope to do in, in, in many of the videos I do is just simply take the mystery out of some of this. Uh, because once you know it, then you can tell other people about it. You can use it. You can practice with it, you can expand on it. And if you do have additional ideas 
uh, for chipping and uh, things that you like doing on your own models, please leave those down below. I always like hearing of new techniques. I'm amazed at the number of techniques that people use uh, for their chipping uh, and other things. So please leave that below. But um, thank you for watching this video, especially if you're still hanging in right now. Uh, you're one of the Iron Men who watches the full video, and I do appreciate that. If you uh, have not been following me on social media, there's some links down there below uh, to the various social media platforms I'm on. And if you would click right down in that area somewhere over there, there is a subscribe button and there's a little bell icon that I would appreciate you hitting. Uh, that way you can subscribe to my channel, which will help me out. And uh, the bell icon will help you out by letting you know when I have new videos. I come out with, right now I'm coming out with about two videos a week. Um, that may not always happen depending on how fast life comes at me, but I'm going to definitely be getting out one a week. So there'll be a fairly regular stream of content coming from me. And so if you want to get notification of that, hit that little bell icon. There's also a link down below to Patreon. If you like the work that I do and it's not a burden on you uh, and you would like to support this work, I would be most grateful. If you would click on the link and see the various levels of support that I offer and the benefits that you get with those, uh, and, and uh, if you would choose to support me there, I would be very grateful. And if you're already a Patreon supporter, thank you so much for doing that. Um, it really does make the work that I do possible because as I, and I don't say this disingenuously, I really couldn't do this at the the pace that I do it with the, the, the materials and the equipment and the kits that I do it, if it wasn't for the Patreon support, we simply couldn't afford for me to do it. Um, and and uh, it would change the picture drastically. So thank you very much for supporting me uh, and, and really uh, helping my, my family out in the process uh, by being a supporter. And with all that being said, let me leave you with one final thought. In this hobby, if you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong. Happy day to you, friends. Bye-bye.